Today I want to talk about uh, the considerations that you should keep in mind when you are loading sulfur on ships, especially if you are a bulk carrier and you do not load it frequently, you must know about the special properties of the cargo mm -hmm. before you load this cargo. So sometimes this question is often asked in the oral examination as well as to precautions to be observed when loading sulfur. So I thought I'd make this video for you. So, sir, before you load sulfur on your ship, you have to know about some of its properties and specific properties as well. I'll talk about that as well. Um, because sulfur is a kind of cargo that ignites uh, readily, quickly lits itself in a fire. Uh, when involved in a fire, it actually releases a very irritating and suffocating gas, uh, which is lethal and can also cause serious injuries or even death. Uh, sulfur also forms very sensitive and explosive mixtures uh, when mixed with uh, oxidizing materials. Uh, bulk sulfur, when loaded in bulk, is liable to cause a dust-based explosion. And uh, if you go and search it up on the internet, you will find there have been cases in the past when ships have exploded uh, and they had no idea as to why it happened. It happened just suddenly and that was because uh, sulfur caused a dust explosion. And this may occur especially after discharge and during cleaning operations because of static electricity sometimes that happens. Uh, dust may, like I said, dust may explode due to static electricity. Some of the properties of sulfur as per the IMDG code or the International Maritime uh, Dangerous Goods Code is that uh, sulfur forms uh, extremely sensitive and explosive mixtures as I stated before with most oxidizing substances especially like chlorates, nitrates, etc. And so it should not be loaded together with that kind of cargo. And then it is also corrosive to steel, especially in presence of moisture. Uh, sulfur should also not be carried as a bulk cargo uh, because the provisions of the IMDG code uh, do not apply to sulfur when it is transported in a quantity less than 400 kilograms per package. And uh, sulfur may also be formed to a specific shape like granules, pellets, etc. That, that is considered sulfur as well. Some of the precautions that you should be observing is that fine grained sulfur should not be transported in bulk. Only lump and coarse grained powder is shipped in bulk. So make sure you check out the properties of the cargo. Carry out mechanical ventilation or hose down instead of sweeping the cargo, preferably with fresh water to minimize the risk of dust explosion. Sulfur residues are also highly corrosive to steel, as I said before, in the presence of moisture. Uh, so make sure that you take adequate precautions or after discharge of sulfur, uh, you carry out maintenance to prevent uh, rust from occurring in the steel. Make sure that you also keep sulfur segregated from any food related cargos and should not be loaded together with it or to the next compartment from it. Protect the sulfur from uh, sparks or open flames. Uh, electrical fuses in cargo spaces should also be extracted. Uh, spark arresting screens should be fitted to the ventilators. However, in case of sulfur fire, uh, make sure that you smother the sulfur fire with even more sulfur. Put more sulfur for it and it will be smothered. Or use a very fine fresh water spray to extinguish it. Do not use it in bulk uh, of water all right? uh, because the mixture together will be forming a very corrosive substance as well. No metal objects that could be picked by grabs should be there in holes because the metal along with the grabs that are used to discharge the cargo can sometimes cause static electricity which may cause certain explosion. All right, uh, then make sure that bilges uh, are cocked and burlaps used and uh, after discharge proper cleaning of hold uh, particularly ledges, box beams etc are carried out. Finally, in terms of documentation, a document of compliance for the carriage of dangerous goods will be required as per SOLAS if uh, the specified quantity or more is carried in terms of bulk, as I mentioned before. Uh, make sure you also get a signed cargo declaration from the shipper giving the stowage factor, angle of repose, trimming procedure, moisture content, flow moisture point, transportable moisture limit, the IMO class, UN number, technical name, 
and the medical first aid guide procedures along with the cargo documents. Uh, detailed information of hazards based on past carriage history of cargo to be obtained as well from shipper if it is possible to do so. And if required, consult a competent authority at the load port itself regarding the requirements in force in the port.